Okay. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are all doing well out there. I recently just hit my three year anniversary here at IBM working as a product manager. And recently I also finished up uh, being the OIC for Gunnery, which was a two week training event, um, you know, being in the Army Reserve. And what I wanted to do today is put together a quick video for you guys, kind of talking about uh, the balance between your military career, that being in the Army Reserve for me, and a civilian career, and specifically working in tech. Uh, for myself, I think it might be similar to other civilian careers, um, and just kind of want to talk about the time balance that it is, and working out the differences between the two, and kind of the context switching that you have to do, um, being a part of both. I think I'll start with uh, kind of the, the biggest question I get usually, which is, what does it actually look like in terms of the timeline, and what do you actually do for both, and how does that work? So I'll say first off the bat that if that's something that you're doing, that you're in the Army Reserve or you're in the reserve component of any branch um, and you have a civilian career that you're also getting after it, um, I would say it's very commendable. I'm not saying that trying to be anybody's dad here on this channel or anything, but um, you know I think being in the reserve is a commitment uh, that involves taking time away and making sacrifices beyond what you normally would just being on orders doing your military job 100% of the time. So obviously certain times, certain aspects will take precedent, but um, you know, being in the military is, is a big obligation and, and duty and service and everything. And so I think specifically pertaining to a civilian job, um, there's a lot of differences there and you obviously have obligations to meet um, and responsibilities you have uh, with your civilian career as well. So right off the bat, I'll say it's, it's, it's a pretty difficult thing. Um, I'm about three years in, you know, obviously in my civilian career, and I enlisted back in 2018, uh, commissioned as an officer, and as you guys know, I went to Bullock last year uh, and finished my MOS school, basically. And so, uh, being a platoon leader for now about two years, I can speak kind of to the experience that it's been um, at the company level as an officer in the reserve, um, and kind of the, the balance that that is. The reserve component, probably of any branch, as you guys know, if you're in the reserve, um, being you know, just one week in a month, like whatever your recruiter might tell you, uh, one week in a month and two weeks a year, uh, at least in my experience, uh, maybe as an officer, as a platoon leader, um, it's definitely not just your one week in a month commitment. So um, oftentimes, depending on the unit, you might have training that falls outside of that one week in a month, and sometimes the training could be three or four days in that month, and the two week training cycles per year, that's dependent on not having any PME, like which is uh, military education, uh, other training events, or schools that your unit might send you to that are required for the mission. That's something pretty, pretty critical to consider because um, it's a lot of time outside of just, you know, one week in a month, which might seem like you can just work that around your civilian job. Um, but frankly, with the military, uh, it's not really a you can say no kind of thing. Uh, most of the time, it's, you know, that's a commitment that you've made and the, the training that you have to attend and uh, whatever it might be is something that's pretty obligatory. So um, I would say that that's one thing to consider and something that uh, I didn't really expect going into it um, as a platoon leader and, and just you know being an officer in the reserve. Uh, not only that, but the amount of time you have to spend outside of drills, uh, just doing planning, right? And, and making phone calls and working with people, um, whether it's within your company or the battalion or the brigade. Um, just ironing things out, making sure the plan planning's done, um, you know, writing op boards, you know, coordinating training schedules, uh, reserving training areas, getting the barracks, the defac, whatever it might be, right, for, to make drill run smoothly. So that way when you get on ground at whatever installation it might be, um, your NCOs just go and execute and it's simple as that. The other thing I'll say is that being in the reserve, um, there's kind of a lack of, there's maybe like a disconnect almost between uh, the your, your civilian career and your military career and kind of the leadership and your management in both. Um, I, I would say not a lot of people in my military circles really know what I do on the civilian side or understand or appreciate what it is I do on the civilian side. And the same thing on the civilian side where, you know, a lot of my buddies, they work in law enforcement because it's, I'm 31 Alpha, um, but you know, if they're not in a government agency or in law enforcement, um, you know, I work in tech and IBM has no idea, or at least the people in my circles, again, that work in tech, 
don't really have much of an idea of what I do on the military side. Um, so there's, again, like a lot of context switching between the two, but being a part of both, um, you have to understand that, that most people don't understand what it is that you do on the other side. Um, and you have to be kind of cognizant of that when you're communicating what's going on um, with whether it's commitments on your military career or military training that you have to do, um, or on the civilian side, what uh, time commitment that it is, um, you know, beyond 40 hours a week or whatever have you, um, that you might have to do at work. So this is kind of the big things, right? Uh, the, I would say really just understanding the, co the, the time commitment that it is um, with being in the Army Reserve, especially as a reserve officer, uh, you're responsible for your soldiers and you want to make sure that they're taken care of. So if you have to sacrifice your time outside of normal work hours or what you might be getting paid for, that's something that you signed up for and that you, you're kind of obligated to do. Uh, not obligated to do, but that's just, that's your job. So, and you should do your job. Um, I think there's a lot of officers out there. Well, I don't want to badmouth anybody, but, um, you know, frankly, there's, there's people that um, aren't exactly qualified to be in their role, whether it's on the civilian side or um, in any walk of life uh, in the military or otherwise, that, um, that you can see are kind of just bad examples of leadership. Um, and you don't want to be that. And everybody knows that, you know, you've got a lot going on, especially if you're, you've got kids, you've got a family, um, that's probably another full-time job. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a big time commitment. Like for me personally, so I'll speak specifically to the experience that I've had basically, um, you know, being in the Army Reserve, uh, let's say for example, this, this past two weeks that I was at Gunnery, um, I'll show some clips here kind of, of, of some of the training. I didn't record a whole lot because of OPSEC and everything, but uh, you know, basically we qualified our gun crews on the 50 cal, the Mark 19, 240 Bravo, uh, crew serve weapon systems. Those are kind of the weapons capabilities that we have. Um, and we did it at a brigade run event. Um, so you can imagine how that went. Um, a lot of sergeant majors calling me, telling me I need to do stuff that are not in my chain of command. But, um, you know, it was good training. I think it was a great opportunity for some of our guys, uh, especially my guys that have never shot the 50 cal before or the Mark 19. And it's obviously a pretty cool weapon system to get a, you know, accustomed to and get that familiarization at least. Um, but they all qualified, I'm pretty happy for them. And uh, overall, you know, it was a good experience. But again, the context switching. So you really have to take 100% of your time and energy and switch that and focus just on gunnery for two weeks, right? You can't think about like the product you're working on at work, whatever issues might be going on. Um, they're just gonna have to figure it out without you for two weeks and, and make it work. Um, you know, on the civilian side, I would say it's not even just between my military career and my civilian career just being working in tech. You could also say I'm a property manager. I've got these two properties that I'm working on. Uh, like I'm a realtor here in Texas, which frankly, I had a few investor clients, but you just can't keep up with that uh, traveling as much as I do. Um, that reminds me, I'm gonna try and put together kind of like a typical drill weekend video for you guys at some point. Um, just to give you an idea of what, what kind of that looks like, at least for me as a platoon leader and uh, in the reserve, kind of specifically what it entails in terms of the time commitment and the travel and, and what goes into it, like the planning beforehand and that type of thing. Just to give you some context. But, uh, but yeah, really, I mean, I feel like almost sometimes I'm like doing too much stuff um, and on top of obviously being physically fit, you know, working on my PT, um, everything else relationships wise. You know, family-wise, like friends and stuff, um, you only have 24 hours in a day, but you really just have to make it work. And personally, I feel like um, uh, I'm, the, I'm the type of person that, that really likes to be doing something all the time. And so if I'm ever just like sitting on my ass, like doing nothing, I just feel like it's such a waste, you know? So it's not a problem for me to be doing all these things and basically having like three full-time jobs, that being my military stuff, uh, that honestly takes a lot of time sometimes. Uh, my, you know, product manager work at IBM and then being, you know, a realtor or doing real estate kind of stuff. Um, you just kind of have to make it work and you get really good at scheduling things and working out your calendar and every hour, every day, like what you're doing. Um, you get very productive, but, uh, you know, it's not for everybody. I'll definitely say that. Um, in terms of the time commitment, it, it's, it's a lot. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that pretty much sums up what the 
you know, what it is that you actually do. And I think there's probably some things I'm missing out that I'm leaving out, but um, I might try to include that in like a part two or something. There's a lot to talk about with the kind of balancing of the careers. The, the second piece of this is, you know, is it worth it, right? And that is obviously very subjective and like from my opinion, do I think it's worth it what I'm doing, you know, juggling these three careers and uh, you know, if you want to call it that, and uh, you know, being in the Army Reserve and that type of thing. Um, you know, I'll say there's definitely days that I find it extremely difficult and I wish I had just gone active duty and just been a infantry officer or whatever it might be and uh, you know, just gone that route, done it for four years or done it for eight years, whatever it might be, and then get out and do something else on the civilian side um, or just gone full time, you know, working in as a product manager or just being a realtor and focusing on that. Um, and while that's, that's nice, I think there is some fulfillment to be had with being able to make like that big of an impact across the board in these different areas. Like I said, it's not for everybody, but I think that um, in the best interest of, you know, life is short and I want to do as much as I can and, and really see what there is to see and experience things. And so I think it's been a, a pretty valuable experience getting the leadership experience and working with my soldiers and you know leadership and otherwise in the army reserve um you know the pressure that you get as an officer as a platoon leader and just having multiple careers going on i think is is almost a good thing sometimes it forces you to be productive and and it just use your brain and you know think more than you might have to um, about certain things and whether or not it's uh you know worth the priority or how to prioritize certain things um, in, in, in your career. So that's kind of my two cents on that. I, I would say it's worth it. I, I definitely think it's worth it uh, so far. Uh, the grass is always greener, right? But I would never know what, it is, what it's like being in the military if I had just gone with my civilian career, and I would never know what it's like working as a product manager right now if I had just gone active duty, right? And life is, life is long, life is short, whatever. Um, there's plenty of time to kind of explore um, other things later on. Um, once my contract is up or if I decide to go to law school or get my MBA or do something else. The last thing I'll probably touch on is like what does the outlook look like for me and kind of what do I expect to do in the future. Um, and that's kind of a tough question obviously because it changes um, day to day but uh, you know the last few months have been extremely busy and honestly haven't had really the time to like put together videos uh, but you know it's kind of not too bad to just talk to you guys and this well I'm talking to a camera right now but uh, it's kind of format and just one take it, but uh, yeah, looking ahead, um, I've actually been interviewing um, the past month or two, um, so I might be switching, I guess, jobs on the civilian side. Still going to be a product manager, but uh, you know, depending on the company, um, IBM gives me the flexibility to work fully remotely. But if I work somewhere else, it's likely that they might make me go to the office, um, and then I might have to move. So. I'm home here in Texas right now, and it's pretty nice, you know, living outside Austin. It's actually weird I'm wearing a sweatshirt right now because it's normally like 100 degrees, like literally 100 degrees every single day, which I've been accustomed to and I actually really like because I much prefer it being warm or hot rather than uh, brisk and, uh, and cold. It's just not for me, um, which is why I moved to Texas. But uh, if I have to move, that, that might change things. Um, if I transfer units, um, I don't know if I should be saying this, but I'm obviously trying to transfer units as well just because I have to travel every month for drill and it's pretty tough and I really do want to get into civil affairs um, and, and try to you know, like work on a, a broadening uh, assignment, I think is what they call it in the military. But I want to you know, move, on from, move on from my platoon leader experience and kind of use what I learned there um, in a different capacity. Um, I think. Um, whether it's another leadership role or just kind of somewhere else, I think that would be a good a good opportunity there. Um, so, you know, we'll see. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do my 20 years or if I'm going to get out after four. It's not four. My first contract is actually eight years, so I'm stuck doing this for a while, whether I like it or not. Because um, in the reserve, it's uh, I think it's six years um, active reserve and then two years IRR. Um, if you go active duty, it's four years active duty and then four years I think IRR so everybody's contract is actually eight years at least as an officer um, that's how it works but um, but yeah 
I feel like I've, I've, I've talked about a lot of things here and probably rambled on quite a bit about, about certain topics, but uh, hopefully that sheds some light on kind of the balance that it is for me at least um, doing both. I didn't talk a whole lot about my work as a product manager, but um, you know, it's fully remote kind of the cross section between tech and business. And uh, you know, it's kind of a, also a similar role uh, leadership wise to being a platoon leader, at least for now. But hopefully this was at least a little bit insightful for you guys, um, especially that are maybe considering being an officer in the reserve or are in the same boat as I am trying to balance your career and, and doing multiple things. Um, but again, if you're doing it, power to you because it's not easy. Um, and we'll certainly get through it. Uh, but you know, you're getting experience that people that aren't doing both, uh, that simply wouldn't be able to have. So um, I don't think it's, it's something where you should be thinking about the grass is greener all the time um, when you have a pretty unique opportunity doing, doing a lot of things and uh, getting that experience. So thank you guys for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like if you enjoyed the video. As always, um, let me know if there's other questions that you know, I'd be able to answer or, uh, you know, just other videos or topics in regarding, you know, the balance of kind of two careers or kind of the Army Reserve side or whatever home improvement videos that you might want to see me make. Uh, the deck is still looking good, so I'm happy about that. Um, yep, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one and take care.